just going back to the end of the example when you didn't have an angle. So you take your angle and you fill it into, so we found the angle of, where was it? 39.4066 degrees. And the second angle is always its complement, so 50.5934 degrees. The second part of the question wanted to know how long was it in the air. So you can take your angles one at a time, fill them into this equation, and find your time. So when I did that with the smaller angle, I got 2.58846 seconds. I could do the same thing for the larger one, but I didn't yet. Then what is the maximum height that it reached? So you're looking for delta dy max. And when you're doing that, remember it's the tu, so you have to divide this time in the air by 2. Remember your a goes in as a negative 9.81. Remember the check is that these two should be equal to each other. And you get, or sorry, these two should be a half of each other, and then the answer should be the other half, okay? So you get 8.216 for the smaller angle. You could now go and do exactly the same thing for the larger one. But I just want to take a couple of minutes and talk about range and angles, because we haven't really done that yet. So if I have a small angle, then the range isn't going to be that big. It's not going to be that big because even though the x component might be fairly large, the y component is tiny. And the y component is what determines how long it's in the air. So this angle might be like 20 degrees. And because the y component is tiny, it doesn't end up going out very far. Okay? So now let's make my angle bigger. Maybe I'll make it 30 degrees. So now the y component is bigger. And so it stays in the air longer so it can go out further. If I make it bigger again, sorry, just trying to find different colors. There we go. If I make it bigger again, Let's say this, that's definitely not 30, but okay, let's say this is 40. Again, it will go out further. But there's going to come a point where it, um, and I think I'm going to need to, yeah, there's going to come a point where it's going to be so far up that it's not going to uh, have a very big X component. I need to redraw because I didn't do my angles very well. So let's make this 20. Let's see if I can make my 30 look more reasonable like 30. And we'll make this one. My markers have a thick end and a thin end, and I always open the thick end. Let's make this one 40. Okay. Now there's going to come a point, though, when the bigger component, um, the y component is going to be so large and the x component so tiny that it's going to go higher in the air, but it's not going to go out any further. Right? Like, so let's imagine 70 degrees. If I do this at 70 degrees, it's going to go up quite high. And so even though the x component isn't very big, because it's up for so long, it has some time to pull it out, and it'll come down here. Okay? If I do, let's say, 60, ah, thick end again, the y component is not quite as big as the 70, but the x component is a little bit bigger, So this will be 70, or, or excuse me, this will be 60. Are you noticing anything? Okay, if I do 50, again, the Y component will not be quite as big as the 60, but it will be bigger than the 40, but the X component will be smaller than the 40, and in the end, it will cross complementary angles have the same range, okay? 
if there's that playoff between uh, how long it's in the air and how fast it's going outward. See? So complementary angles have the same range. So then the next question is, what angle will have the longest range? And I hope you're answering. I hope you're answering 45. Right? It's going to have the longest range. It has the components that are equal in the X and in the Y. And as a result, it ends up with the longest range. So complementary angles have the longest range, and 45 has the biggest range. All right? Okay, time to move on to non-ground-to-ground projectiles. Maybe I should do it in a separate video.